beating out of my chest. If the microphone was on my heart, you would be able to hear it beating a million miles per minute because I have a secret that I'm going to share. We all have secrets. As they said in the earlier show that sometimes they're silly things, sometimes they're frivolous. But I think a lot of us carry secrets that are deeper than that. A lot of us carry secrets that have stigma and shame and guilt attached to them that we bury deep inside. If we look at the statistics, on average, it's one in three, one in five, one in eight on most things, like depression, suicide. On average, there's somebody statistically in this room who has an addiction, who's had suicidal thoughts, who's been a victim of child abuse. And we bury these secrets so deep down that sometimes we forget that we have them. But most of the time, they infect our life and show up insidiously. They show up as dysfunctional relationships, broken families, numbing the pain in so many different ways. So, my secret, three little words, so easy to say and yet the most difficult thing for me. I have herpes, not the kind up here, the kind down there. My brother laughed out loud so hard when I told him that he cried because he said, I thought it was going to be something more serious than that. But the truth is that our secrets only have that meaning for us, that deep stigma, that shame and that guilt they, that manifests over so many years of hiding it. I kept my secret for 18 years. And so there were small ways that I let it out, people that I trusted and talked to about it. There was a lady who was a counsellor who called me about seven years ago. And she said to me, I've just diagnosed a young lady who was in her 20s at the time, the same age I was when I found out. And she wasn't coping very well. She thought this was the end of her life. And she asked her if I would speak with her anonymously. So I spoke with this girl on the phone. And when I hung up, I bawled my eyes out. It was like this amazing relief and freedom. And I felt lighter from sharing it. But more profoundly, I felt the beginning of my healing. In sharing with her, I was able to give her some hope that life didn't have to end, that she would be able to go on and have amazing relationships and love, and that there would be people who would want to date her and be with her. And all the things I said to her were all the things that I realised I had never said to myself. All the things that I said to her were the things that I wish someone had said to me a lot sooner than allowing 18 years to go by. And so that was the seed of my TV show. And today's the first time that I'm sharing that. You know, for me, I started to think, wow, what if we could create a community where people could share their stories and their secrets and help other people to lift that shame and that guilt and that stigma? If they could show them that there was a way to move forward, if they could give them hope. Because when we hide our secrets, we isolate ourselves from information, from people, from community, from connection. And we make that secret grow. It manifests bigger and larger than it could possibly ever be. So I started sharing on Kirsty TV with people who came on, everyone from people who've been human trafficked to stripping to depression to addiction and everything in between. And there were three universal principles that I kind of started to see that the people who were courageous enough to share their stories all had to go through in order to get to that place of healing and to feel set free. The truth really does set you free. And the first one was the courage to be vulnerable, to be naked. That's how I felt for the last two days. I can't even tell you how ill I've been feeling today. And yet now it's, it's released. Every time I tell it, it gets, I feel lighter and I feel freer. But to tell it does feel like being naked. You know those dreams where you wake up? and you're naked at work or a public place. Everyone has them. I don't know why we dream of being naked, but maybe that's it. Maybe that's our vulnerability dream. I don't know. But you have to be willing to be courageous enough. I had a picture of a lion's head on my screensaver this week because I had to tell my family and friends this secret 
before I felt comfortable to do this in public. It doesn't get any more public than Ted. And it's ironic because for years I couldn't even say the word herpes. I had to call it X. I wrote X in my diary. I never t shared the word. I just could not say that word. I felt such guilt and shame around it. And it's ironic I would be sharing it at TEDx. So <laughs> I know the universe works its magic once again. So you have to have the courage to be willing to put yourself out there and be naked. And it was really hard. I'm not saying it's easy. There's totally a disclaimer on this stuff. This is the hardest work I've ever had to do in my life. Almost as hard as the 18 years of carrying it. But there is that sense of feeling freer and lighter every time. And everyone reacts in different ways. They need to catch up with you and where you're at. And that's okay. The second thing, the universal principle I noticed was that they had to look at things differently. You know, you, I'm always going to have herpes. If you were raped, you were raped. What happened to you happened to you. What you did, you did. You won't be able to remove it somehow magically, clean the slate. It's a part of you, and you have to choose to look at that differently. I now see it as my greatest gift. This has been the hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my life. But I also see that it's my greatest teacher. It's infected the work that I do today in a positive way. It's uh, informed the work that I do. And it's made me more empathetic, more understanding. I learned very early on that people can look really put together on the outside and not be so put together on the inside. So everybody has a story and everyone has a secret. It gave me more empathy and more understanding and more compassion for humanity. And so you have to choose to look at it differently. I had a guest, little Peggy, who's here today, was on my show, and I always remember Peggy saying to me, I'm still a little person. She had to change how she felt about that. She was never going to grow and be tall overnight. I had to change how I felt about this. And you have to change how you feel about whatever your secret is. I like to call them pretty little secrets. When you get to a place where you remove the shame and the stigma and the dirty secret, it gets to become a pretty little secret. When you choose to look at it differently and see it as the greatest gift in your life, the greatest teacher in your life, that can be a beautiful place. And it's the only way that I've seen with everyone I've worked with that has been able to move forward. And then the last one, that when we share ourselves, when we share our secrets, we heal ourselves and we heal other people. When I spoke with that lady on the phone, it healed me and it healed her. And we were both able to move forward in a new way. Last week, when I told one of my friends in Australia, she had known me for a long time and I'd never shared this with her, she took my hands and she looked at me and she said, me too. And we both started crying and she said to me, if you're brave enough to share this with the world, then I'm going to be brave enough to share it in my world. And that's why I'm doing this today, because I hope that for everybody out there, that you get to a place where the truth will set you free, because your desire to heal has to be greater than your fear. Your desire to heal has to be greater than your fear. Thank you. Thank you.